Imagine if all the world's history was only contained in books. If we could never see the pictures of the assassination of JFK, or the paintings of Rembrandt, or hear the music of Beethoven or B.B. King. Imagine if all of history could only be experienced intellectually and never through seeing, feeling, and hearing. I imagine that this reality would leave us very disconnected from the past. It probably would lead to a lack of empathy and emotional connection with the people of the past that only makes us human. Luckily, this is not the case. Men and women, and arguably elephants, have been recording history through art and music since, well, the beginning of time. Historians have been delighted to find a multitude of African art throughout the continent of Africa that helps tell a story of its lifestyle and history. Some artists choose to paint in abstract ways to recount events. Other African painters, such as Shabamba Kandamatula, chose to be very straightforward in his art. Matula is well known in Africa for his recounting of history through the painting of significant events and circumstances in the African Congo. Matulu played an important role in educating the people of the Congo. Shibamba Kana Matula was born in 1947 in Lumbambashi, Zaire, Africa, which is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Zaire was under Belgian rule since 1906 when they colonized the country. Matulu was brought up under Belgian rule that was based on the colonial trinity of state, missionary, and private company interest. As he became older, he became more intrigued by his country's history that was being slowly tainted by Belgian influence. Matulu began painting when he was 19 years old just for fun. The first time he painted was in 1966 which was six years after the Congo gained independence from Belgium. As he began to experiment with no formal training, his passion for Congolese history poured out of his paintbrush. Before his endeavor into painting, Matula wanted to educate his peers about the history of the Congo by becoming a school teacher, but his studies were interrupted by the violence following the Kintanga secession in 1960. Determined to find an alternative way of educating his community, Matulu began to experiment with the medium of paint. His chief aim was to create a visual narrative documenting Congolese history from pre-colonial times to the present. By 1971, Matulu had already proved himself to be a very talented painter. While diving into the art community, Matulu struck up a friendship with the well-known African photographer and art curator, Etienne Bol. Bol commissioned Kana Matulu and four other artists to paint a series of paintings for an exhibition that wrestled with the brutal and violent realities of Belgian colonization in the 1900s. At this time in Matulu's career, he was quite poor. He was only able to sell his paintings for a small sum and found it extremely hard to make a living off his art. Each painting was completely handcrafted. He would make each canvas by hand out of reclaimed flower sacks, stretched tight and nailed to wood. Each one is edged in a handmade frame, painted a complementary pink, brown, or pale blue. Sometimes he signed his work Shabamba Kandamatulu, sometimes Shibamba K.M. In much of his literature, he is referred to simply as Shibamba, or even T.K.M. Mutulu's specialty is genre painting, which involves the retelling of history. His other main specialty is African pop art, which involves characteristics like black outlining and text on the paintings. Matulu's first major series of paintings that is now widely known consists of depictions of African Prime Minister Patrice Labamba. He finished this series in 1974 and took him about a year to paint. These paintings were extremely important because Labamba was one of the most impactful independence leaders in the Congo. On June 30, 1960, Patrice Labamba 
gave his legendary independence speech at the ceremony of the proclamation of Congo's independence. From that moment, and even more so after Labamba's controversial assassination in 1961, Labamba has become one of the most iconic leaders of the African independence struggle. Mutulu's paintings narrated the events of Labumbo's life leading up to his death. Mutulu's political statement was not unseen in this series. He clearly supported Labumbo, which was clear in his Christ imagery in the paintings. The paintings of Labumbo's death is one of Mutulu's most widely known paintings. Right after he got done with this series, Mutulu spent the next two years completing one of his biggest goals of his career. In an interview with anthropologist Johannes Fabian, Mutulu stated that his dream was to paint the entire history of his country. Fabian, who was sponsoring this aspiration, noted that Mutulu's country of Zaire was nearly at its end, so Mutulu would have to act quickly in his painting. He said in that interview with Fabian, I tell things through paintings. That is, through painting I show how events happen, right? I don't write, but I bring ideas. I show how a certain event happened. In a way, I am producing a monument. By 1976, he completed an astonishing series of 101 paintings that recounted the entire history of the country of Zaire. The display depicts Zaire from ancestral times through to the brutal colonial era to the fight for independence and post-colonial struggles. The title of the series was simply the history of Zaire. Each painting contained both illustration and text, each painting a representation of a particular moment from the history of the country once called Zaire. Each piece given a detailed title, words written across the blue sky or over the mottled ground. In this way, they can be considered for what they show, for what they say, and for what image and language do together, overlapping. Matulu's political and artistic influence continued to increase after the series was released. However, he was always relatively private and secluded in his lifestyle. There are only a few accounts of his words on politics and Congolese life, mainly from a few interviews with Johannes Fabian. Because of his private life, it took some time for Matulu's friends to realize that he had suddenly disappeared. The last time anyone saw Matulu was in 1982. People he knew thought he had gone back to his village. Others speculated that he may have moved to neighboring Zambia. Some thought that it may have been a politically motivated disappearance. Historian Chik Anta Diop disagreed with that theory. Diop writes, Shibamba was easy to find. He was always working from home, but suddenly he wasn't there anymore. In troubled times, it was not uncommon for people to move a lot in search of a peaceful life. We don't know if he's alive or dead. Despite his ominous disappearance, Mutulu continues to have a lasting impact in the life of Congolese people. As one of the most impactful Congolese artists, Shibamba Kanda Matulu has brought history to his people through the beautiful medium of painting. He successfully depicts the most important events of his home country, Zaire, from their indigenous times to the time of their independence from Belgian rule that was so strongly fought for. Matulu teaches us an important lesson. History was not meant to just be read in books. It was meant to be experienced. History is not something to be viewed. It is something to be conversed with and wrestled with. Mutulu teaches us to find a new and fresh way to interact with history. Because history forms us, and we form the future. I can't imagine a world where history was only found in books. I can't imagine if I could never see the pictures like the assassination of MLK, or the paintings of Picasso, or hear the music of Bach or Louis Armstrong. I can't imagine a world where history was only an intellectual activity 
that could never involve seeing, feeling, and hearing. Luckily, that is not the case. Luckily, we have men, women, and yes, arguably elephants, to help us have a conversation with the past.